Hi guys, it's Maxim with Art Medicine. I like to call this Art Medicine. Uh, I would like to show you my latest art project uh, commission. I was uh, hired to uh, paint a landscape painting. It's behind me. And we'll go into the details of that. Um, so it's a show and tell. Uh, it's a little bit of a studio tour. Looking at some more artworks. I will talk. Uh, so we are looking at this painting here and uh, it's a commission now uh, what's a commission it, this is when uh, someone hires me or another artist uh, or someone else uh, to work for them uh, to create something upon their request a commissioned painting I am Mm, I, I get to, being an artist, being a painter, I get to do this kind of work. It's, it's actually good for me to accept the opportunities coming in. Um, I uh, live in a big community. I live in a global community. I am showcasing my talent and my skill set online and uh, in real time and in the education system and uh, in friend networks and it's a lot of uh, a lot of show a lot of uh, effort energy goes into uh, marketing or promoting myself and uh, and then uh, people respond to it uh, let's say a uh, person wants to see, uh, uh, likes the kind of work I do, they trust in my diligence, in my uh, conscientious uh, qualities, in the product that I make, and they like the style, and uh, they are wanting to a painting to be created for them, a custom-made painting. And that's uh, where I come in. Let's take a look at the overall painting. The entire rectangle, the entire frame. I got uh, a bunch of paintings there and uh, I just wanted to fill up the space that it was kind of empty there but in the corner of the room so but this is the finished job right there it measures uh, 40 inches tall and uh, roughly 50 inches wide This is a painting on canvas, on primed cotton canvas. It is um, it is made with acrylic paint. And this job is for me. This job will be um, roughly thirty to fifty hour job. It is possible for me to complete a project like this within a couple of weeks just because mm, I, I need to have a, a look at the painting and to have it sit and communicate with me. I could have completed my 40 hours in one week, but I still want time to 
and to really understand what I'm looking at. You know, I want to uh, get into the additional quality and uh, tune it up even more, tweak it up even more. Uh, for example, the latest addition was to create even more complexity within this foliage of the tree. And that's the close-up of the surface. Now you can start seeing the grain of the canvas. Um, I go through a, a process to create an artwork like this. I would uh, communicate with uh, a client and uh, they would often tell me in their own words and with some examples of existing photographs or artworks what they would like to see happen with the project. In this case, we talked about um, following up with my own interest as an artist and painting landscape and in particular painting fall autumn landscape and the kind of style i use which is a combination of uh, somewhat uh, realistic or somewhat refined qualities like there are there's a a degree of detail to this work but also it combines a really broad painterly and expressive Mm, style of um, placing paint onto a surface with the, a palette knife, for example, or uh, this painting doesn't all reliant, doesn't rely and is not all reliant on really careful drawing out of details. This is uh, following its own process. And so I sketch, I talk to the client, little by little we get an agreement with what the course of action, what the strategy is going to be, and then I go off creating this artwork, and uh, somewhere towards the end I would go send the um, pictures of my results and get feedback, and um, you know, it's really nice and it's it's really fun to communicate and arrange all of this and then see the whole process, the whole project go from conception of the idea and uh, co-creating with another person all the way through all of the all of these curves of becoming a full-fledged artwork. I uh, create my paintings based on my own criteria, based on my creative search, based on what I would like to achieve. I think this work that I make for out of my own interest is my best work. This is where I uh, learn and uh, develop my skills to a higher level of mastery. I grow as a person and as an artist during the, my investigations of my own creative process. Um, I went to school to study art. I've I've been to a specialized art school since I was in my early teens and then I went to um, high schools that had art programs and then I went to university to study uh, fine art uh, as an undergraduate program and then later I uh, completed a master level education and uh, for a number of years, I worked as an educator, um, an art instructor, 
and uh, I've been an artist uh, throughout all these years. So all of this experience and all of this background plays uh, an instrumental role in my development as a painter or a drawer or an artist. It is uh, after learning all of these uh, extremely valuable things about art, I wouldn't know how to unlearn what I know. I, I know that I would I really benefit from knowing a color theory. I benefit from having a background in drawing, I have a, a lot of technical background. And I am really inspired by the examples of other artists, uh, like classical art. You know, artists who existed before us and created amazing examples of what is possible to paint or create. I gravitated to uh, representational an expressive painting. So what does that mean? Um, representational, it, it is uh, other than abstract. It would, uh, an image would contain a recognizable representation of what is being shown. Uh, there will be a visible landscape, there will be trees, there will be figures. So, you know, I set out to portray to represent uh, what I am often thinking or looking at and then I compose it within a painting. And the method of painting that I adopted and uh, for, uh, individualized, you know, this would be uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, layering of uh, thinner coats of paint progressively making the coat of paint thicker and culminating in detail or brighter highlighted areas coming at the end. So it's a step-by-step it's a, a -step type of method and I will be, will be seeing a lot of demos from me showing the step-by-step -step process. I really wanted uh, to come back to doing this, to making videos and to bring in my knowledge, my insight, my practice to you. Uh, I've been asked to do this so many times, like all the time, that's all I get asked about is uh, uh, you should teach uh, a lot more broadly online uh, and uh, I shy away from teaching a lot and this will, this is a really good way of sharing. I can do this uh, out of uh, my own space and at my um, the time of my choice. So let's go and uh, show and tell about my recent paintings. We are looking at an acrylic painting, a landscape measuring 16 inches by 20 inches. Um, and this is uh, my personal choice of the image. I carefully select the um, photographs that I would like to turn into paintings. I um, draw, often draw sketches. I recompose and crop images until I get to the Mm, optimal, in my opinion, uh, to an image that I really like, that that I call balanced, 
the balance the balance in an image like this is produced by a relationship between objects that are dark or mid-tone and light so there is enough visual information to keep me traveling throughout the field of painting or throughout the picture plane and having enough continuity to come back so I am not um, there's no two two empty areas everything is carefully arranged and decided so this is a organized view and experience this is a painting uh, this in this painting I am using um, black uh, red white and yellow and I am aiming at producing a palette of browns and uh, grays and the type of contrast that is evident or found during a season of fall and I also like the to include reflective surfaces different surfaces such as maybe there is a pond or a creek there in fact I like this image so much that I decided to create more versions of it so this is a uh, an unfinished painting that I just started this is also within a range of like 20 some inches 24 inches wide uh, it is an acrylic and this is uh, halfway through maybe with the same idea the same image where uh, you could see that some elements are maybe less painted less finished less refined and there is already a bit of a movement towards detail in some of this area and I'm also looking for a different look to the reflective surface of the water I started to indicate the kind of style I want to use on that area and there is an, another one even bigger of the same idea started let's have a look at it there it is uh, so you are seeing where this is uh, even more uh, more taken forward more completed than the one before but the the scene is very similar I am working out the approach to how I'm gonna do the water the reflective surface all these squiggly uh, vertical type of uh, strokes or marks and there are those horizontals that cut through that and uh, there's contrast uh, what, what else this one is is going to get done soon uh, good enough let's take a look at another image that is also current or recent so we are looking at this smaller painting here um, this is uh, stylistically this is a very similar idea I'm using a similar uh, palette of color those uh, golden browns and here and here I am uh, approaching the making the water with a similar kind of squiggly painter uh, painterly marks approach here there are strong contrasted dark shapes of the trees there in that scene and this is a an exercise and this is a smaller canvas it's uh, like 16 inches wide 
and this is all done in acrylics so here I am I've done this for a workshop where I was showing students the result that they could produce in class during the workshop and uh, the focus of the workshop was landscape painting so we talked about how to organize the frame how to compose it we looked at interaction between the background midground and foreground where foreground gets to be more contrasty more developed in details more colorful and then there is movement to fade as it continues going towards the back Here is another picture and we're looking at my attempt at creating, you know, diversity and I like to play with my, with my uh, tool set. Uh, I I don't want to always repeat myself, so I pick another challenge. Like I want to mess around a little bit here, bring in uh, these close-up elements and tree there, and then I want to see how I can silhouette a close-up detail coming from the edge here, and then I am looking at what would be effective uh, for the shadows within the grass or the tree backgrounds you see how i'm using a gray or cold or blue or purple or colors there and contrasted by the extremely light highlight areas where yellow and orange and brighter yellow with the mixture of white is used uh, fun and play, fun and play. And going to next artwork or an exercise in painting. I'm lowering my camera. So this is also a workshop material it's a demo that I do often in front of the class. So I would take a small canvas like this and uh, with a group of students and I would uh, show and demo, create uh, in real time this example. And then I would have the group begin making their attempts that are following along with what I set out and uh, I would walk around and you know promote effective ways of uh, completing or resolving this project and that's how people get to learn a lot really quickly they interact with me I show them how I use a palette knife uh, over some surfaces to make things really pop out and be highlighted and have these meaty and gritty kind of painterly surfaces here is oh, upside down and we'll go side right side up and so this is another project that I'm doing for myself for as a part of my creative search, I set out the criteria and I follow it. I carefully select the photographic reference of a scene that I'm particularly interested in for qualities that have to do with a space, like the closer and further space with uh, angles of the elements that are dynamic there is uh, some kind of i'm being enchanted by the quality of the nature that i'm seeing in the photograph or when i go to 
for a hike in a national park or even just uh, behind the building in the park there. And then I want to bring some of that enchanting quality and then of course I'm dealing here with dark, mid-tone and light and the color uh, choices that I'm making. And then there is so a lot of this is also technical. It's how do I approach detailing up close in relationship to the further back. And, and then I create this image and that's what it looks like a little acrylic painting I just want to look at the landscapes today and the elements of the landscape this is a, a, a study of a cityscape and cityscape and um, trees and the forest landscape it still deals with similar aspects it has to do with creating depth and space within a picture via often these contrasty elements of darker and lighter qualities and then it's a it's an exercise and i'm looking for I have an idea and I am wanting to work work on it in real time then I can see how it's materializing and then I can carry this over to a larger painting or then I can learn something about this and take it take the the good lesson out of that the takeaway I particularly here I'm liking this this bit here where the orange light is reflected in the ground there so you know that that bit like i'd probably cut that all together and i'll just do a painting of that i'm kidding uh, here is uh, another landscape exercise that is uh, for for educational purposes i created this for some of the students I was teaching. I go around uh, doing workshops and uh, I, over the years I have mm, demand. There are people out there who uh, call me up or c contact me and they invite me uh, to do this educational work. And I used to work nearly full time teaching but um, I don't anymore. I I travel, I paint, I have an alternative lifestyle. Like I, I like the to lower my carbon footprint. But this is a whole other ball game. Let's just focus on the landscape paintings in acrylic that I'm wanting to share with you today. So this is like a really ultra <laughs> like uh, this is kind of cartoony, you know, the sky is blue and the clouds are like this with, with curls and with white and there, there are those green trees and a field. But um, this is just an example of what else can we do and it really is, I don't know if there is a limit to image making. Yes, it, uh, things contain similar elements every time we make an image, but it still is another take on things. I love making images. I love painting. And uh, my chair is squeaky. I'm sitting on it. All right, another artwork, another painting. This is, uh, I am, you know, the, the impression here is I am in the shadow with all these darker close-up elements of the forest, the trees and the foliage and that that mm, lakes of, of designs within the uh, leaves of the tree and within the tall grass and within the branches of the tree and all of that is in the front and then I am trying to set up this highlighted further back space so there is this impression of walking through a scene 
of a forest and or a park and then having a road ahead I really like to invent picture space invent uh, properties of an image it's quite painterly too if we look up close look at the look at the quality of the close-up there is no real drawing of realistic elements there this is all like dabbed and um, brushed expressively on well, here's one more and uh, this is uh, all all of these trees darker trees with fall color foliage with uh, some reflective um, glitter of puddles or mm, creek this is the uh, latest theme that i'm exploring i'm creating a body of work that that is kind of like that and the small paintings we're looking at today are studies for for the larger paintings i'm working out my my uh, my choice is how am i gonna paint that how am i gonna paint that when i get to to the big final i will work everything out in my uh preliminary studies and those studies are in themselves pretty nice lovely little paintings for me painting creating drawing uh, being occupied with uh, with this process is first fun and play and therapeutic everything starts there I would like to do what makes my heart sing I would like to make something with my hands that has to do with art I enjoy it out of that grows all of the byproduct of uh, the paintings the work the job the like everything is after that for me if i am not having fun and if i'm not excited or inspired then i am not likely to to make much much value thanks